Okay, and uh, welcome back, everyone. You guys just keep on coming back to chess.com for video lectures by I am Daniel Wrench. Um, let's be honest. You come back because you love them, right? I mean, just just be honest with yourself for a second. You love the videos. That's why you're watching, okay? Um, but also, uh, or either that or you just like the fact that I make fun of myself and I'm practically practically mentally retarded when I talk. But anyway, beyond, beyond that... Um, my uh, gift for Gab keeps me rambling, and uh, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to keep rambling about isolated queen pawns. This is part two of our um, entire video series on the isolated queen pawn. And uh, we're going to continue, like I said in the introduction video, with uh, the perspective of playing with the pawn and the activity and the uh, tactics that you can create playing with the pawn. Um, and uh, today's, this particular video is going to be discussed a discussed with uh, two positions, two um, very good examples of uh, making a particular breakthrough in the center, and that is the D5 breakthrough. So I'm kind of giving you a big clue about where this particular position is headed, um, but how you do it and whether or not you're able to uh, calculate the position deeply is um, really how well you should score yourself. Uh, this particular game is uh, Korchnoi versus Gurgiu from Romania in 1968. Um, don't go to chess base and look up the position right now just because you want to see the answer, okay? You need to try to work hard and solve it. But now you know where the game is from. Um, and Korchnoi basically unleashed a uh, conversion tactic here. I like to call them positional tactics because they're based on a positional idea, but it's a combination that leads to a clear advantage. And... Um, one of the main themes I talked about in terms of playing with the pawn was not making trades, especially in the sense that um, usually if you're attacking on the king side, keeping the pieces on the board can only increase your attacking chances. And also from your opponent's perspective, the more pieces that come off the board, if that isolated queen pawn is still standing, he's going to have better chances of attacking it because there's less pieces to defend it. Um, now, with all that being said, um, concrete calculation overrides everything, and that's just something that if you guys have a chess coach, they probably told you, um, you know, we can take in all the different essence points about a position, the structures and the ideas and the general perspectives and all that, all that malarkey, but basically, if you can calculate and, and, and you develop the skills to be a concrete calculator and you push yourself and force yourself to find good moves and uh, you work hard over the board, then obviously if a combination comes your way, you got to take it. Um, and um, this particular position is no different. Um, what happens here is a very good example of uh, how to make this D5 breakthrough, as I've alluded to. But I want to point out one thing that's interesting about why the D5 breakthrough is almost sort of begging to be played here. Um, <clears throat> one of the things I referred to was that keeping the minor pieces on the board was good for attacking chances on the king side. Well, what are White's attacking chances on the king side in this position? Bueller, Bueller, anyone? Bueller? Exactly. There are really no attacking chances on the king side, okay? Um... We hope you enjoyed this video demo from chess.com. Subscribe today to finish this video and get unlimited access to our full video library. Your membership also includes access to Chess Mentor, the most advanced interactive training tool available anywhere. You'll also get full access to the Opening Explorer, Tactics Trainer, and much, much more. So sign up today and get serious about improving your game.